Hi everyone, I have finished the um, bits and pieces left from the last video, as hopefully you can see. I'm sorry, the light is really um, strange in here today. See a bit where it's coming through the window. I've closed the blind a bit. The sun's just gone in. <laughs> anyway, the aim is today to finish off the last few details. Now I'm not going to show you everything. Um, like here I'll just show you one of the flowers and things like that like we have before but at the end of the video you will see a completed page so uh, that is the plan I'm just going to sweep away some of the pencil crumbs and we will have a look I'm going to talk about colour planning so we have yellow we have blue pink purple and orange now I want to do some red we do have a reddish colour which I'm going to use um, probably for these and then we also have a couple of flowers here and one here. So I need to pick some other colours that we haven't... We've got some different pink tones, which I think we could use. Um, and maybe a different blue? I have a think. But um, we're going to just try and mix it up a little bit. I think if we... Unless we're doing a specific colour palette where we stick to certain colours, I like to try and make it very random. So I don't want pink next to pink, I want it really mixed up. I don't know whether that's a good idea, and sometimes my pictures can end up looking a little bit messy. But we'll see how it works. So red is quite an interesting um, red in our pastel set that I will show you, but we'll come in nice and close. And it will help with the light. I find a further away shot... The light isn't doesn't usually look as good, but uh, when we're in close, you should be able to see. So this is the colour that I'm thinking looks quite red in the pastel set. It's called carnation. It's prob it's like a sort of pinky red, I guess. So I'm going to use the uh, use it. I'm only going to do one flower here because we've got a fair bit to do actually. And uh, I want to uh, get it all done in this video for you. So we have three only. Oh, the sun's come back out. So hopefully it's not. I know my lamp and my camera will adjust and I hope it's okay. So put this down. It's quite a sort of dusky pink really. But I think it will work um, with... Um, we haven't really got um, red reds in the gold. Um, I'm probably not making much sense but I'll show you the swatch charts. We've got a magenta which is a, a sort of reddish and then the purple deep but that's really all we've got. There aren't reds apart from maybe um, the red ochre which is very orangey and perhaps the cherry pink is quite reddish which is what I think um, will work best with that one rather than um, and we've also have a Venetian red here, which I don't think will work. It's more orangey. So to have, I think this is a more pinky colour. So I'm actually going to use the cherry pink with it. Okay, so I've got to find it. Um, where is the cherry pink? There it is. So you can see, oops, hopefully, that it's fairly red. But when it goes down, you should be able to see the reddish colour in there. I'm going to be quite careful because it's very vibrant to uh, not put it down too deeply because it needs to blend into that, that um, what was it called? Carnation. <laughs> memory. Good memory, hey. They say like a sieve. <laughs> Holes. <laughs> so there we go. I'm going to take the carnation back to um, Blend that in a little bit, like this. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, going to be warm for the rest of the day from the sunshine. But uh, I've already, I go out first thing in the morning normally if I'm going out. Um, I don't like it too hot. Okay, so we've got to think of the centre. I'm just having a think. What am I going to do in the centre? Oops. Um... Hmm. Yes, I'm going to try this. I don't know if it's going to work, but why not? Let's try cream rose. We've got a sort of beigey colour first in that bit and in the middle. 
I don't know how well this is going to stand out, which is why I'm, I'm going to actually put it on a haul of it because I want to slightly dim down the uh, this colour because it's very deep. This Bengal rose deep. It's a bit blunt. I'm just going to sharpen it. You have to bear with me. The noise. It's my uh, Derwent. If the noise is really offensive to you, please let me know in the comments, and I will cut it out when I'm sharpening. Sometimes I do anyway. So a Bengal rose deep. Um, and I'm going to do that outside ring, but I'm going to really lightly build up the colour on top of that colour that's there already so that it doesn't go too deep. It looks a little bit similar to the petals, but there we go. I'm happy. I'm going to leave it there. And we have the green to do. Um, let's grab another green. What sort of green will work? Um, I'm going to try this green. Ooh. This is the Savannah. It's an interesting name, isn't it? We'll just do this little bit here and these two leaves. So we'll colour them in first. We'll have a look at the tone of green and have a think about what's going to go with it. I think I've got a feeling I know what's going to go. Uh, except we don't have that colour in this set. I was thinking a Viridian would go well. We don't have a Viridian. <laughs> Oopsie. Um, let's use the thallow green. Oh, it's very blunt. Um, it's quite dark. I'm going to try to do it without sharpening it because it's noisy. I'll sharpen it um, later. I'm just going to really just put a little bit on. A bit there. You can see I've left that quite pale. I don't... I'm going to go back to the, um, the savannah and just go over that a little bit to sort of blend it in. There we go. So it's not too much, just to darken it slightly. So that's that one, and these and these all the same. Oh, I've missed that one, look at that. Oh well. And this one the same as well. Now we have got this grass growing along the bottom and I had a colour in mind for that so I'll share that with you now. I'm going to do that in the juniper lime. It's quite a deep colour actually and I'll just show you a little bit. It's such a slim bit that I think we need a sort of fairly darkish colour. Yeah. So that's our grass. I'm just going to put that in a different place so I remember that that what that was for. And then we're moving along. We've got these two and we've got this one up here. Um, let's have a think. We have got some more pinks. I really think this pink is one to use. This is the Jelly Bean. It's a great name. It's a very Barbie pink. Not my um, favourite shade but I think because we've got a mix. I'm just checking. That isn't the one we used before. No. And um, because we've got a mix of different colours, I think it's nice to add it in. And actually, it's a really nice pink to work with a purple and a blue. That's a really nice combination, blue, purple, pink. And this tone of pink works really well. And I did a picture quite recently um, with, I'm not sure which pencils it was, not these. Um, using those tones and I really liked it in the end so that was good I am going to use oops we don't have an awful lot of this type of pink I'm going to use the purple light oh I can't find you where are you I'm holding it miles out of Sean <laughs> this is that it's quite dark so I'm going to be really careful and I'm going to use it on the outside and I'm just going to gently build up the layers of sun's back come back out until um, it uh, looks right. I shall have to um, look out my sun hat, I think. I have got, um, I've developed um, over the last few years a little mark on my nose, which is like, um, I guess you might call it an age spot, something like that. So I uh, tend to now always wear a hat, just to be sure to keep it out of the sun. And my nose um, always burns um, easily anyway. So I'm going to go back to my jelly bean and just blend in those bits. This outside bit I'm happy with, but just to um, 
pull that colour up towards the tip a little bit more. So my nose always gets red. So uh, I started wearing a hat last year and it really helped. So that's something I plan to continue with. Now, oh, sorry, my nose is running. <laughs> so let's deal with that and then move on. Um, leaves. Now, um, what do we have? We have a few, I'm trying to use all the different colours that we have, which I think, all, not all of them, but lots of different colours. And I'm thinking this green flower colour might work well with the pink. So we're going to try that. Um, I'm not going to do the stem. I'm going to leave that for a darker colour. Um, I know some of them I've done the lighter for the stem and some of them I haven't. I thought I would just mix it up a bit. So I'm going to apply this. I'm going to try and make it a bit darker at the bottom anyway because it's actually quite a fairly dark shade. But I'm going to find something a bit darker to just go in with it. Um... I'm thinking that, mm, yeah, this colour here actually looks really similar. This is Jade Green Light. It looks quite similar, doesn't it? Um, in fact, I think it's probably lighter. Let's try it. Oh, it's a bit darker. Look at that. So we'll put a bit of that on there. And I'm going to use that off the stem, but it needs sharpening. So I'm going to do that off camera because it's so noisy. And uh, do that um, later. Oops. I'm just piling my pencils in an order that I hope I can remember which I did for which. Now we have a few leaves here which don't belong to any of the plants. So I'm going to pick a green for those. Um, I'm going to pick oops this angelica color whoops because it's fairly dark and uh, i don't think we'll need a secondary green i think we can just color them as they are because they're quite small i'm just gonna color them all in very quickly and then i will uh, know where i'm at with that one there we go and lastly, flower-wise, we have these two. Now we have orange, we have purple, we have um, pink. So we could do them blue, which I think is what I'm going to do. Because we've got a really pretty blue, which is very different to the... Oh, I'm trying to get it out. Oops. Which is very different to the blue we used for the other blue flower. And it's called Blue Daisy. It reminds me of the sky blue from Polychromos. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to use with it to darken it up, but we'll just pop some down and have a look. I think it's a pretty, it's actually isn't, it's slightly purpley, I think. So maybe it's not quite like the uh, polychromo sky blue, because that isn't purpley. I don't know why I'm doing this one as well, because I should really be um, hurrying along. But hey, <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> So that's that. Now what I was having a look at what I can do with this and I think the ultramarine light is going to be the closest um, or the cerulean blue. No, ultramarine light. Oops, I nearly dropped it then. And I'm just going to do a little bit near the centre. Oops, and the centre. But Partly because I went over the line, so it was then blue, but also because I think it will just work. And then I'm going to grab the, um, oops, oh, it's rolling right across the desk. Let's put it that side. Um, the, back to the blue daisy to sort of blend that into each petal, really. I like the way these work together, they blend together nicely. You can almost pull the colour up with the pastel one, which is fun. Okay, those don't have leaves, so we don't need to worry about that. But what we do have to do is we have a bee and we have some butterflies. The bee I'm going to do first. Now, I'm not sure I want a pastel bee. I'm going to do the wings though in this pastel grey. Oops, I shall show you. 
This is the winterberry and I'm going to just do a light touch. The wings, I'm going to try and make it darker near the body, a bit lighter for the rest and I'm also going to do his head in this colour. Now the body, I'm not sure, do we do it in I've got this orangey colour. Maybe this would work. We'll give it a go and see what happens. Coral blush. going to do the edges of these bits that I think would be um, yellowy orange. So I'm trying to do it a little harder on, darker on the edge and lighter towards the middle. And then we need a yellow. Mm, yes, I'm going to use, we've used this one before, but I'm going to use it again. The um, Almond almond Rose, it's quite hard to read, isn't it? And bring that colour in towards the middle. It maybe looks a little bit too orangey. You might prefer to do him in more of a yellow. Now his sting, I think I'm going to do in a dark colour. I'm actually just going to go for black. Oops. For the ivory black from the gold set. There we go. <laughs> Pastel B. Quite fun. Okay, butterflies. We have two butterflies. There they are. They're probably blurred because they're either side. Um, I'm going to do them the same, I think. Um, the bodies, I'm going to use the winterberry. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you with one. I'll show you with this one because it's some more... Oops, my pencils are in the way. Hold on. I'll show you with this one because it's a more complex design. And then do the other one. I'm sorry for all the scraping. Can we come in a bit more? Yeah. So I'm going to go back to my winterberry, which we had out just now, and do the body. It's going to be a bit pale. I'm just going to build it up a little bit. There we go. You can get some colour out of the pencil. Okay, you could use some ivory black on the outside to make it stand out a little bit more, but I think it's such a small space. I don't want to risk it. Now he's flying above some blue flowers and there's a pink flower and I'm trying to think what colour should I do him. Um, I don't want to do him pink or blue because he's too close. I might do, we've got quite a dark purple. Oh actually that pink, actually both. Let's do that. Right oops, so we have a hydrangea. Look at that, it's quite a dark purple. I'm going to start with that and I think I'm going to I know what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to ignore the um, markings and I'm going to go in dark here, just going to layer it up and then lighten it all the way towards the end of the wing, like that. So I'm going to take some colour all the way to the end, but not very much. And do the same on this side. And fade it towards the end. I just had a paranoid moment then. I just thought I hadn't pressed record. <laughs> that would have been a bit of a disaster. But luckily I had. Right, so that's that. And we'll do the same with the other butterfly. Identical, but I'm not going to uh, show you that one. And then we're going to use a pink. And we have, oops, quite a dark pink here in the camellia. And we're going to do the reverse. So we're going to start at the end of the wing and take the pink in. And we'll see how nicely they blend. Well, I hope they blend nicely. I can't see why they wouldn't and just mix it in like that and I know we've got a pink flower nearby 
so maybe there'll be too maybe we'll get a bit of pink overload but I just wanted to try this to see how it would look if you don't like it then you can just leave it with the purple sorry I'm not talking I'm trying to stay in the lines and you know how hard that is for me Now you can keep layering back and forth until you get the blend that you like but I'm actually quite happy with that. But I do want to add a few black elements. I'm going to try and do it with pencil but I may have to do it with pen. It depends how well this works. So we'll try. This is the ivory black from the gold set. I want these dots to be black. That's okay. That works really well on top and all this edge fiddly again sorry no talking too much concentration going on There we go. I'm just going back over. Now on this butterfly, um, I will probably do the whole of that tip in black um, of those wings and just a little bit on that one. But I will see when I do it how I think it's going to look. So what I'm going to do now... Oh, hang on. We've got a beetle. There he is. I'm just going to pick colour for our beetle. What should we do? Mm. Mm. Let's have a quick look and think. Um, I'm thinking maybe this colour. I don't know how well he'll show up but we'll see. This is called Candy Tuft but it's a sort of beigey colour. Do him in this and we'll see whether he needs a highlight of colour. I'm layering him up trying to get him a bit more vibrant. I think I'm going to use the yellow ochre if I can find it. Is it just called yellow ochre? Yeah. Where are you? Is that you there? No, that's the terracotta light. That'll do. Terracotta light and just do a little bit think a bit at the back, a bit at the front, make him look a bit shiny. I don't think he'll look really shiny but just a few highlights. There we go. Now I've done everything, I'm going to stop, I'm going to finish um, it, I'm going to come back and show you the background. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to go away and finish off this bit for now. Right, I have now um, completed colouring all of the flowers. I've just realised I haven't actually finished the shading on those, so I will just do that now. I remember I was going to uh, going to sharpen this pencil before I did it, and I haven't. <laughs> but um, I will just talk you through this top butterfly here while I'm colouring in this bit. Um, I didn't quite go for the same pattern as I had done on the other one so I just did a little bit of black around the edge of the wings rather than um, rather than doing a really big section on the tip um, I just thought it would be a little bit better because it's a pastel colour I thought a big blob of black might be a little bit over the top so uh, that's why I did that now from a distance looking in the camera some of the bits of this page actually look white um, I don't know if it does to you as well, it's quite hard on my um, camera view finder but I assure you there isn't the white, there is white on this page but it's the background and we're going to just use some pastel to um, colour the background. These are my Mungio soft pastels, I'll just show you the box like that. Um, 
I haven't tried lots of brands but I find these perfectly good and I want to do a bit of a blue sky in the background and I'm going to use this really pale blue here because I don't want um, anything too dark obviously and we've got a lot of um, different colours going on and but it's a very pale page so I'm going to get my um, this is a washable cloth it's quite stained but it's okay I just find a that that's a blue bit so I'll just use that bit I'm going to just rub it onto my blue pastel. Now I do have a cloud template but I've decided not to use that on today. What I'm going to do is just do some patches of blue like this. Just a few bits here and there and leave some white. And hopefully it will look a little bit like it's cloudy. It's going to be quite subtle. I don't want to go too hard because um, we've got all these um, pale colours on our florals. I don't want to um, make them sort of disappear. So I figure if I do a few areas of blue here and there, it might look like it's quite a cloudy day with a bit of blue sky just popping through every, you know, every so often. And uh, I'm also a little bit wary that I don't want to smudge the um, colours on the page. So I'm just adding as I talk and thinking, you know, where would it work? where do I want to sort of avoid it's tempting to put it all over this top bit where there's nothing but if I don't leave any white it's going to look a little bit strange so I'm just putting bits and pieces but I don't want to go too near to the black bits on the butterfly because I fear they may smudge so if I do it at the top here and avoid the rest of him that might be work better and I'm just sort of darkening as I go thinking you know where do I want colour? It's quite tricky with this because here, I don't know if you can see, I can see the word June showing through the page because it's uh, a bit see-through. But uh, anyway, I'm sort of trying to avoid putting it on anything that's yellow because it might turn it um, green. But we can sort of, just here and there. I'm just going to brush that off and have a look. Now I don't know how well you can see because um, when we're far away it looks even paler than it does in real. But I think I'm just going to leave it there. I don't want too much and uh, I think it's fine. You know, um, you might want to, as I say, use a cloud template or something like that. But I'm just going to leave that there. So uh, that's me. So that's my page done. I hope that was okay for you. I'm really pleased with how well the colours work together. Obviously it was my first try, it's a bit of an experiment, but I think we found some really nice combinations. I love this um, down here, the cherry pink and the, um, oh, what was it called, um, the carnation. It's a really nice vintagey sort of tone. The purples came out well. This pink flower I really like. So, you know, there was some really good... I'm not so sure about the blues. I think I still need to play around with those. There are lots of blues that I didn't use. So there's a lot of playing around to be had. But, uh, but overall really happy so thank you so much for watching obviously there are three videos if you've missed either of the other two you should be able to find them on my um, channel um, I'll try and um, um, link link them together or put a link or, or something for you but otherwise um, if you just look in my planner direct um, playlist you'll find them so thank you for watching um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and happy colouring <laughs>